aim is to make the changes inside yourself first while you're still in this particular job so that you don't experience the same problems in the next job. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Live Support with Odile for changing negative implicit childhood memories using the Remit method. So we've created this forum for those who've watched our YouTube channels, YouTube channel, just the one, <laughs> have read our book or seen any of our other content and need some help with using the techniques, but aren't in a position to do one-to-one -one sessions at the moment. If you're new to the Remit Method, be sure to check the description of this video for more information. And of course, if you'd like to submit a question or you'd like me to take you through the process in person of changing memories, check the link in the description of this video for details on that as well. I have just one question this week so far that's been sent in. It's from Spasitle. So Spasitle sent in a question last that I answered last week that was that I went into some details on that. And she sent an email saying, thank you very much for your response. I watched it. Just a few follow-up questions. So I'll put this in context as we go. First of all, Spasitle's question was about being in a job that uh, an internship that she's not happy and that she finds very stressful and because it's an internship she's not actually getting paid a salary either she's just getting a stipend and she wants to leave the job she wants to resign but she's worried about the unemployment rate in South Africa. And so she's worried about not finding another job. And there was also some concern about what her family would think of her if she left this job, considering the rate of unemployment at the moment. So you can check last week's video for my answers to all of that. And I'm just going to answer her follow-up questions here today. The first one is, she asks, why is it important to answer the conscious mind? And what do you do if you don't have those answers? Such as, if I resign from this job, how will I pay my car note? So that's a great question, Spasitle, and I'll answer the, the question first, and then I'll read your second question. So the reason it's important to answer the conscious mind first is because we need the conscious mind to stay strategic and not emotional. So, you know, rather than buying into the negative emotions and thoughts. So if you think of the unconscious part of your brain as a dog and the conscious mind is you, the dog's owner. So you're out walking the dog and you're on your way somewhere. And now if the dog suddenly spots a squirrel and starts chasing it, barking, and you're holding the leash, and instead of pulling the dog to heel, you allow the dog to drag you along so that you're both chasing the squirrel. Of course, you'll never get to where you're wanting to go. So instead, you want to remind yourself that the squirrel is not a real threat and it doesn't need to be chased. The dog is automatically chasing it. But you, as the human, don't need to join in. And so in the first instance, you need to recognize that the squirrel's not a real threat and that you are on your way somewhere else. And the dog needs to come with you, not the other way around. In the same way, when we feel those negative emotions, because negative emotions are caused by stress chemicals that are so strong, because they are for survival, they're meant to keep us alive. It's the fight, freeze, flight state. Because they are so strong, it's very convincing. Right. Just like when the dog is really determined that squirrel needs chasing, he's strong, he's determined, he's completely, you know, no, nothing else matters except that squirrel. In the same way, that's the effect of the stress chemicals in the system. So you want the thoughts that follow the emotions. So you feel the emotions, that's like the dog starting to pull on the lead. And the thoughts that follow those emotions, like I'll never succeed, or there are no jobs, or I'm stuck or nothing works for me, or whatever other automatic thoughts come following those initial feelings, that's us starting to notice the dog pulling on the lead, and we're starting to focus on how that squirrel is so important. It must be important because the dog is so convincing. So we buy into it. So there's that moment of, oh, squirrel, we're going to chase the squirrel. In the same way, nothing works for me, or I'm I'm not worth anything or why is I'll never get out of this or whatever those thoughts are. That's the beginning 
of the squirrel. That's the beginning of the dog starting to drag us. Then we need to answer. We need to answer that logic in that moment. Just because the dog is so short, the squirrel needs chasing. And just because the dog is so loud and so strong and so determined doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's true that the squirrel needs chasing. So we need to resist that urge to follow the dog as loud and convincing as it is, and instead call it to heal. Ignore the squirrel, call it to heal, and face the direction we want to go in to get to where we want to end up. In other words, we need to start by answering the logic. Well, that's not true. There have been things that have worked for me, or I haven't tried everything, so it can't be true that nothing works for me. Or it's not true that there are no jobs at all. There are people working and there are bound to be options that I haven't thought of yet. And so on. Think of it the way you would answer a friend. So if a friend was saying to you, I'm stuck or I'm hopeless or this won't work, or, you know, if they were expressing the same thoughts you were feeling, how would you answer them? How would you encourage them? Presumably you wouldn't say, yeah, I know it's You've got no hope at all. <laughs> you would go, you'd say, come, let's have, let's think of something. You'd, you'd try and encourage them. And so do the same for yourself. And that is a necessary first step in order to get the conscious mind on board so that you're able to take the next step of finding and changing the unconscious references. Because otherwise you won't get as far as that. You know, if your conscious mind is buying into the fears and the negativity created by the unconscious part of your brain. In other words, you're not going to be able to get to where you're going if you're allowing yourself to be dragged around by the dog chasing the squirrel. So hopefully that clarifies it and answers why it's important. Let me know if you need more explanation on that. So now for the second part of your first question, which is you ask, what if you do not have those answers, such as if I resign from this job, how will I pay my car note? So that's a really logical question. It's a good question. And the logical answer to that question for the conscious mind is you don't have to resign without having anything to replace that income. So tell yourself you won't resign unless you've got an alternative plan for income. So there's no need to put yourself into the situation of jumping ship without anything to hold on to. So you can make the decision that you want something else and that you will take, you can make that decision now. I know that I want something else and I will take the steps to find something else without actually resigning. And then when you're ready and you're sure you can take that action, then in the meantime, and this is the very, very important part. This is crucial to do before making any decisions. The aim is to make the changes inside yourself first while you're still in this particular job so that you don't experience the same problems in the next job. We take our references with us. So whether it's changing jobs or moving house or getting different relationships when we're changing our outside circumstances in order to change our experiences, all we're doing is taking it with us. So we will get to re-experience it in a different way with different people, different circumstances, but the same experiences because the experience is coming from inside. So it's like, you know, if you've got something like a stinky thing in your pocket, some sort of something that's stinking, and you're trying to change, you go to another room or you change, get out of the car or whatever, it's in your pocket. So, you know, as long, it doesn't matter where you go, you're taking it with you. So you want to take it out of that pocket, put it, put something that smells nice. Then it doesn't matter where you go because that's what you'll experience. So the key is to make those changes in yourself first before you take any action, before you make any decisions to I'm going to resign or I'm not going to resign or do anything like that because you're taking it with you. So what that looks like is change the childhood memories. So the references that are creating your current inner experience, how you're feeling, change those. And you'll know that you're ready to make that decision of resigning or not resigning or any other kind of decisions when you're feeling good where you are. And that decision is strategic rather than emotional. So in other words, you're not making that decision to escape from something or because you think there's got to be something better out there. You're making that decision because you know, oh yes, so there's an option that I think would make would be 
strategically better than this and you're not feeling the emotions of it. So you're not driven by the emotions. So in other words, when you're not dreading going to work and when you're able to be on the phone with someone who's stressed or frustrated. So for those who didn't see the previous video, this was part of Spasikla's challenges at the current job. So when you're able to be on the phone with someone who's stressed or frustrated or rude, and you're able to feel compassion and kindness instead of stress and pressure. So remind yourself that there is no danger. So someone, even if they're really rude, no matter what they say on the phone, your life is not in danger. Any emotional triggers you're feeling are coming from childhood. They are not about now. And you'll have noticed that there are some people who can speak to people on the phone who are rude and saying all kinds of things, and it doesn't seem to affect them because they have different childhood references. So that's the goal there. You want to feel, you want to be able to feel calm, kind, compassionate, understanding, and supportive without feeling triggered. And then you'll be able to make a strategic decision. And if that means finding a different job, you'll be able to find something that fits in with the new references and that you'll enjoy, that you're well compensated for, and that's fulfilling and that you look forward to going to work every day. So all of that means changing the childhood memory so that they prove you're safe and loved and that you are not responsible for how others are feeling, that you don't have to make them feel better in order for you to survive, and that you do deserve to be praised, acknowledged, loved, and that you are valued and safe. So all of that needs to be in your childhood as proof so that your brain is then producing the chemicals that go with that. And then what you're experiencing in your work now, the people, the deadlines, the frustration, whatever's going on there is not going to trigger those stress chemicals the way they are now, the way it is now. That will automatically result in you feeling differently when you're dealing with people at work and therefore the decisions you make and the opportunities you notice moving forward. So I hope that clarifies that. And so now to your second question. So the second follow-up question Spasitha had was, I have done some detective work, and I briefly mentioned this in my initial question when I stated there is no guarantee that I will be absorbed permanently, thus my work might not get rewarded. I find this to be a reoccurring theme in my life where I always do the right thing and buy the book, but either nothing comes of it or the opposite happens. No good deed goes unpunished. So specifically, well done for finding that thread, that connection there. It makes perfect sense. So now, of course, you need to change those childhood memories of not getting rewarded and change the childhood memories of learning that no good deed goes unpunished. The childhood memories of doing the right thing and not being rewarded for it or being punished anyway, those kind of things. So create new childhood memories of being rewarded for what you do. And this is so important. Also being rewarded for not doing anything at all. So we want to break that program, that paradigm right there, that what you do is what keeps you alive. So make sure that you have new childhood memories of being rewarded, being loved, getting physical affection and being treasured just for existing, just because they just love you because you exist. So create memories that prove that your value is not tied to what you do. So your value is intrinsic. You don't have to do anything to be loved, praised, or rewarded. You deserve to get things without working, without struggle, without having to prove anything. And I know that that phrase there, you deserve to get things without working, can be a really difficult paradigm to change because many of us were raised with that idea you have to work for what you get. You don't. There are plenty of people in the world who get rewarded and they don't do anything or they don't work as hard as the others. It is, it's a belief. It's not a fact. And that belief keeps so many of us stuck in the state of struggle without reward because the brain is constantly striving to keep us in that state of working hard and struggle, and it won't be able to keep us in alignment with that if we get rewarded. Those are key foundational memories. You want to have memories that prove that life is easy and you are loved and safe, even if you do absolutely nothing. Create new childhood memories of you just playing, reading, or watching TV, or whatever activity you love doing, 
and your parents come over and they hug you and they tell you how much they love you and then create new childhood memories of you offering to help with chores and your parents saying, ah, thank you so much for offering, sweetheart, but I've got it. It's okay. You go and play. Really amp up the feeling of what that would feel like if that was how you were raised. Use whatever will create that feeling that you don't have to work hard to get rewarded and to be valued. You may also need some stepping stone memories of being rewarded for working hard or for doing the right thing and so on as well. And so you can also create memories of doing what you would consider the wrong things and being loved and getting affection and encouragement anyway. So we completely break apart that construct of your life depends on you doing the right thing and then you don't get rewarded for it anyway. So create those as well. And so for those who are new to this, I'll put a link to the information on Stepping Stones in the description of this video as well. But those final memories need to be that you are loved and safe no matter what. Of course, to everybody, let me know if any of that needs clarification for you. I know that some of those concepts can be, I know I had a lot of resistance to the idea of not, because I grew up working from six years old with a very over the top work ethic from my family. They all started working at four and five years old. So there was always this thing of working hard and struggling and not getting rewarded for it. And the idea of getting something for nothing or taking it easy and getting rewarded for not working, that was a big one to, to change for me. All right. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you need more clarification or help on that. Mm -hmm.